Good morning. Welcome to the Sports Card here on ESPN2. I'm your host, Tad Kozinetsky, and as always, every Saturday morning, we try and bring you some interesting people in the wonderful world of sports. Today, we have a very interesting guest for all you baseball fans, one of the most respected coaches here in the South Jersey area. I want to welcome to the show today the hit doctor, Joe Barth Jr. Coach, for our people here in South Jersey who may not be familiar with you and your family, can you give us your background a little bit? Well, I, I grew up and played at Gloucester Catholic, and I played at Ryder College. And uh, right after that, I started working and coaching with my uh, with my dad. My dad, uh, Joe, Joe Barth Sr., he's coached Brooklyn Legion since 1953, I believe. And in that time, the Brooklyn American Legion team, for again, people who may not be familiar, and if you're in baseball, you know of this Brooklyn American Legion team. How many state titles have you won? I mean, it's been a tr tremendous amount. Uh, I think it's 18, 18 or 19. Something like that. Why is the Brooklyn American Legion team so successful year in and year out? Well, I, I think I think we've been fortunate. We've had a lot of good players uh, come through our, our area, and, and I think Pop is as good as anybody uh, in this part of the country at recognizing talent. And then I think my brothers and I, uh, help maybe develop it a little bit because we, we work pretty hard, but it's only my dad's eye for talent that gives us the kids to work work with. Now, the American Legion baseball, for people who may not be familiar with it, is kind of the all-star league for high school play during the high school season. Now, how is it determined who gets on what team and what high school you pick from? Uh, well, there's this high school all-star ball, and you have a designated area to draw from that goes mainly by schools. In other words, you're allowed to have so many schools up to 3,600 enrollment, and they have to be all adjacent. And each uh, each Legion team tries to get the players from that designated area. Now, this may not directly help you. I might be uh, helping out your competition here. Sure. But for our viewers here who, who may go to Delsey, uh, Woodstown, is there a team for the kids in the high school? Oh, here? sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe the Delsey kids, a lot of them uh, play for Bridgeton American Legion. And the Woodstown players, uh, they play for Bridgeton, and then most of the other players in this area play for either West Stepford or the Washington Township team. And the kids would just have to try out? Right, right. Find out who the coach is. Now, when it comes to Brooklyn, how do you hold your, uh, first of all, what high schools go to the Brooklyn team? Well, we take from Gloucester Catholic, Gloucester High, Audubon, and Collingswood, and uh, basically what we try to do is, is go out and watch all the kids play prior to uh, uh, American Legion tryouts, and and then we just pass the word to uh, the players that are back from last year, and they tell any of the young players that are interested when when we're going to get started. And a lot of times we, we don't try to uh, we we let everyone try out that wants to, and uh, pick the best from there basically. Is there certain things that you look for? We'll say right now when you're picking your Brooklyn team, are you looking for certain things in these athletes as they're practicing, trying out for the team? Well, w one of the things that that we look for first is work habits because Brooklyn uh, is a six or seven day a week thing in the summer, and one of the reasons we've been successful, I think, is because we play so much and so often, and sometimes. Uh, we just have to say to a player that he maybe he has the ability, but he doesn't want to put in the commitment. Uh, our players give up everything. Uh, they don't go to the shore during the summer. Or most of them don't work because our program's so demanding. Uh, but over the course of the 40 years, m my dad's teams have had the results from it. So now our players, they more or less come uh, expecting to make that kind of a commitment. So it's it's not that tough. To, in fact, we've had to cut more kids in the last few years than ever. But um, the kids make a heck of a commitment when they play for Brooklyn because it's a six-day-a-week thing. How tough is it to cut a young man? You tough. Know, as, as young kids, we all have dreams. I'm going to be playing in veteran Stadium. How tough is it to pull a It's tough. That's, that's the only part about coaching I hate. I absolutely hate that. And at least in our program, you're limited. You're only allowed 18 players. And it's so tough because every player that tries out for, his, for our team is a star on his high school team. And it's uh, for me, you know, to say, okay, I, I want you, I want you, I don't want you, I, I hate that. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we'll, you know, Pop, he's, he's as soft as I am. I mean, he's hard on the outside. And uh, sometimes we'll just prolong the tryouts and, and, and uh, work them real hard and hope that some of them just, just quit. But lately, these kids have seen the success and they've seen some of the players go on and get scholarships. So they're not about to, to quit. And so we've had to. Uh, you know, tell me to come back, you know, work hard and come back next year. The one thing that we try to do 
is open it up every year so that even if a boy doesn't make it one year, he has to feel that if he works real hard and passes someone that he has a, you know, an opportunity. We're not going to, you know, overlook him the next year if he, if he improves. Now, if a boy does make the team and you have your team set, about what time of the year is that? Is that just is that during the high school season that takes place? Yeah, we have tryouts late April or early May, and uh, we also we, we play a lot of ball in the fall, so some of the kids get to see, you know, how many shortstops we have or how many second basemen we have or whatever, so they get an idea where they stand. And I, then I think what happens sometimes is they go all winter and work real hard and come back and try out late April. All right, we're talking with the hit doctor, Joe Barth Jr. We will take a short break and be back with more here on the Sports Card right after this. Welcome back to the Sports Card. I'm Tag Kozineski. This week's guest, the hit doctor, Joe Barth Jr. We're talking about your book on American Legion team. You just get the team intact. A high school season just ends. Now what happens for the American Legion and specifically your team? Well, uh, uh, once, the, once our season gets underway, it's pretty much... Uh, single games or double headers practically every day and it doesn't leave us a whole lot of time for practice so we actually practice before and after the games and that's where we put all our stuff in and uh, the average day starts at three or four o'clock with the players doing individual hitting and fielding and so forth and we have our team practices and our BP and uh, infield outfield and then after the game they're going to go over team stuff and and running so it, you know you're pretty much a six or seven hour a day. We, we, we try to run it much like a pro team or a, a big time college program and that's the only way that, that we can de develop them and um, well like this past past week Ryan Lasinski works out at, at my academy him and his dad every, every day and the one thing he said that he's learned in the three years he's been with the Dodgers is that it's a 50 to 52 week a year job. He takes one week off and rests and doesn't even pick up a ball and after that one week he begins the process again and every great player has a process to become a great player and the sooner the kids can get that message and get onto a year-round program the better and that's the one thing I think that we ask our players to make a commitment we make a commitment to them to work year-round or at least to give them the opportunity and I think they see the benefits of getting a little bit better you know every day when you say work all year round, can you be a little bit more specific with what you mean towards that work? Well, you know, I, I, John Kepsey, before he signed with the Phillies, I, he used to keep track, and I think he said that he played something like 400, 450 games over a three-year period with us, counting his high school ball and fall ball. But we'll, we'll play about a 50-game schedule in the fall, and then the kids will take a month or two off during which time they're lifting lifting for baseball. We have them, you know, doing a lot of strength training for, for baseball and then right after the first of the year they, they start hitting and pitching and trying to prepare for the high school season. High school will come, they'll have like six or seven scrimmages in high school and the normal high school season is about 20, I think it's 25 games plus two tournaments so there's another 30, 35 games if they're fortunate and then um, we'll, we'll play 60, 70, 80 games in the summer. This year I'm I'm going to load up. This year I'm actually going to try to play 80 to 100 because we got so many young pitchers that maybe aren't good enough to pitch regular for us in the Legion League, but they have to get innings. So we're trying to figure out a way. of might have to go back to the old triple headers on the weekends. Oh, wow. But th the kids could play 80 more games, and then we're right back in. So they're, they're playing year-round, and uh, we try to monitor the, the pitchers so they don't get more than 35, maybe 38 starts a year. And, uh, but other than that, we, we go pretty strong. You talked about pitching, and that's something that's stressed today with young kids, kids in high school. And I hear a lot of nightmare stories about kids' arms not being in shape. For parents out there who may have younger kids, what are some things, if they're involved with Little League in sports, what are some things they can do to build up the strength in their arm? Well, I, I've seen a lot of the Dominican players, and when you compare the Dominican program with ours, the first thing that hits you is that they play all year long and they throw long toss every day all year long. And they don't seem to have the arm problems that we do. What we do is we play a, a lot of the youth programs play four to six, seven weeks. Mm -hmm. And the players' arms are just getting stretched out and the season's over. And then mm -hmm. they put the gloves and balls away for the whole, for whole another six or seven months. That's just like anything else, your arm atrophies. And, and next year you're back out trying to stretch your arm out again where the Dominicans arms never get out of shape 
and they throw long they throw long toss with a softball but um, it doesn't really matter you're going to throw the ball as far as you can you know start short and keep backing up until you're throwing the ball as far as you can about 12 times and if you do that on a regular basis eventually your arm gets really much stronger and you won't have the, the arm problems now is this something too with this throwing we'll say in the off season when you talk about weightlifting, you have your classical guys that like to train for just weightlifting. Are there specific uh, exercises for its baseball yeah. arm? Uh, in all honesty, Ted, I, I've had more people, players hurt from lifting weights incorrectly. It got to the point where I stopped telling them to lift weights because um, I don't know that much about it as far as for baseball and making sure the pl players do the correct lifts and do the lifts correctly. Mm -hmm. that, that's hard to do. And so uh, I've been fortunate that the speed and strength coach, Dwayne Carlock for the Eagles, he's up in the Cherry Hill area. So he set up some sports specific baseball programs, for example, and he sits there and monitors the way our kids lift. Mm -hmm. And that's made a, a big, big difference. And you can't do a whole lot of stuff behind your head for baseball. You shouldn't be doing bench presses. And there's so many exercises that would actually make you worse in baseball. So I think it's important. I'd rather them not lift than to lift on their own or lift incorrectly because there's too much, uh, too much of a chance that they could hurt themselves. We could talk for hours about the off-season training. At the end of the show, we'll give you a number where you can get a hold of Mr. Barth and his people that can properly go through in detail this with you. But right now, we'll take a break, and we will be back with more with the hit doctor, Joe Barth Jr., right after this. Welcome back to the Sports Card. I'm Tad Kozineski, your host. This week's guest, Joe Barth Jr., the hit doctor. If you want more information on the the information we're giving to you, but it could be a lot more specific information. 1-800-HIT-DOCTOR is the number you can sit down and talk. Join his academy as a facility available in Cherry Hill. Coach, you've been coaching now almost 20, 25 years. Have the kids changed over that period? I, I think a little bit. They, they probably have a lot more things to do, Tad, than, than I did. It was just baseball and basketball and football with my brothers, but um, I think the biggest change is with the parents. I, I, I'm of that generation. I'm a baby boomer and the baby boomer parents are uh, crazy and uh, I, I, <laughs> think what, I think what it is is, is uh, they're so busy you know it's they're two worker families and so when they get to the ballpark they, they vent some of their anger with their kids and in the old days I mean you know we kid about and all but in the old days nobody ever questioned my dad n n the guys that were on the bench were happy to be on the bench and the parents just sat and watched the game. And now, I guess because uh, they're working so hard all the time that when they get to the ballpark, you know, they want to get involved. And, and uh, they sort of push a lot more than they used to. And, and I think in the long run, it, it hurts the kids a little bit. But uh, at the same time, sometimes the parents push them a little, helps them to work harder. But in the old days, in other words, the coach coach and the, and the parents more or less were, were spectators. They're much more active today. How much of a problem do you think that poses with the parents towards the coach, especially on the high school level? Well, my son deserves to be playing. Why isn't he playing? Well, that kind I, of thing. You know, I think it, it causes some problems. Obviously, I mean, uh, I, I feel now, you know, it's 20 years since I, I co started coaching. Now you you have to be able to communicate with the parents uh, a little a little better. Uh, in the old days, you just say, well, he's good enough to start or he doesn't. Nowadays, you have to explain yourself. Um, I think you have to be able to communicate everybody's role. And I'm not sure that that's wrong. I, I think the kids should know their roles on the team and, and so forth. But it just seems like they have so many other interests that, uh, for example, I had an eight-year-old's dad say to me, does he, does he have a shot uh, or should I make him spend his time doing something else? I said, have a shot for what? He said, you know, pro ball, a scholarship or whatever. And my answer to him was, what's wrong with an eight-year-old just playing baseball for fun? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He's going to take him out of baseball because you don't think he's going to be a great player. And I never, I never worked at baseball as, as a, a child. I played it. Yeah. Our whole family, we just played it. That's what it is. It's a game. And eventually we got real good at it because we enjoyed it. And we kept going out there day in, day out, doing something that we liked. And... One of the reasons that soccer and roller hockey, street hockey, which you know we never had when I was a, a youngster, well, one of the reasons they've taken off and been so successful is because a lot of the kids feel like that's a way to get away from dad. Yeah. Dad thinks he, all, all parents feel like, well, I know baseball. 
I know maybe you know football, but I don't know nothing about soccer. Go ahead and play. Or I don't know nothing about street hockey. Go ahead and play. And the kids sometimes are glad to get away from the pressure that's put on them from other sources and just play a, a, a child's game. So uh, we're trying to, at, at our camps and w with our team, we try to make every drill uh, have a purpose, but at the same time have it be fun, make it measurable, make it fun so they enjoy playing the game instead of always worrying about their performance. And I, I think our kids feel less pressure on Brooklyn where they have scholarships is at stake and sometimes pro contracts. They have less pressure on them on a day-to-day -day basis sometimes than an eight or nine-year-old in Little League because, you know, maybe, maybe dad's trying to accomplish things sometimes through the youngsters, you know. That's the only thing that, that's changed in the past 30 years. We had talked uh, a few weeks ago about relieving the pressure of the kids in each individual bat, and we both thought the kids get too tied up in my batting average is this and my one loss record is this. And you have an interesting way of attacking that where you have the kids kind of focus on each at bat and try to accomplish one thing or hit the ball hard. Could you elaborate a little more on that? Well, I, I think, again, we've become too performance oriented sometimes. And uh, when you're working with someone, you're trying to improve them for the long haul, at least that's what, what we're trying to do. And if a player is trying so hard that he's in a slump, the worst thing you can do is keep telling me, well, you're 0 for 4, you're batting 250. What we try to do is look at a week or a series, and uh, our only goal was to go up there and get uh, a couple good swings every at bat, try to get at least one good swing every at bat. If we did, that's a success. And if a player gets 10 or 15 at bats and can come back and say, hey, I swung at good pitches, I got good hard cuts. Even if you didn't get the hits, that's fine. You've accomplished what we're we're trying to set out, and that way it sort of takes the pressure off of the things that they can't control. They can't tr control whether they hit it into a hole or hit it at someone. Their only job is to go up there, see the ball, get balanced hard cuts at a good pitch. Likewise, the, the pitcher, see the glove, hit the glove. If you feel like uh, you're trying to make good pitches and they hit it hard, well. So what, we're, we're just trying to, we're professional glove hitters. We just want to hit the glove, and if they hit it out of the park, so what? And we, we, I feel we take the pressure off our players by asking them, hitters just get good hard cuts, pitchers just try to hit the glove. If you did, you've been successful, and we'll, we'll, we'll worry about the outcome down the line. And then over the long haul, they start to get good at those things, and then the results come. But if you put too much pressure on them at the beginning, you don't get the results. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about scouts, scholarships, what gets you to the next level with Joe Barth, the hit doctor, right after this. Welcome back to the Sports Card. This week's guest, Joe Barth, Jr., the hit doctor. If you want more information on what we're talking about, he has a facility in Cherry Hill and has camps around the area. You can call 1-800-HIT-DOCTOR for more information. The big thing now, baseball starting to turn into a little bit of a business. Everybody's trying to mm -hmm. get to the next level. Can you talk a little bit about what parents should go to prepare themselves for in high school and at maybe freshman's junior year, sophomore year, looking for scholarships? Well, I, I, think, I think the first thing the kids have to do when they're looking for scholarships, they got to work hard enough to, to, get, to get one. And, okay. and I think one of the big problems now is I run showcase camps, uh, there's scouting services, a lot of parents send these portfolios of their sons starting in uh, their junior year, which is good. I think that's what you should start doing, narrow down the schools and send some information their junior year and senior year. But the problem right now is, isn't uh, exposure. The problem is overexposure. Mm -hmm. These guys are spending too much time campaigning and not enough time getting better at baseball. And a lot of parents are under the mistaken impression that you can convince a college coach through the mail that the boys can play when in reality, they'll find out whether they can play or not. They should spend more time getting stronger. I, I think hitting is in great deal a, a function of strength and how much stronger and quicker you can get. And I, I, think, um, I think the kids have to focus in on that. And if you're good, they'll find you. Jumping way ahead, Go ahead to the scouts. People come up to me all the time. I can't believe my son wasn't drafted. What do scouts look for in a ball player on and off the field? Well, you know, as a, as a South Jersey person, sometimes I get frustrated. I'm not so sure I know. I, 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 uh, I, they say that they're looking for uh, speed and they're looking for power, a great fielder. But doing camps across the country, I honestly feel that on the West Coast and in the Deep South, 
the scouts come to the ballpark looking to find one or two outstanding skills or tools to make the, give them the opportunity to sign these players. Where here, they come to the games looking for a five-tool player and try to eliminate players by trying to find something wrong with them. And when you look for something wrong, you find it. And the other problem they have here on the East Coast, the scouts' territories are so huge that they may only pass through here once or twice preseason or during the high school seasons to see a player. So he, he, number one, he has to have a career day. Number two, on this part of the country, in this part of the country, they never get to know the kids. So they never sign someone from the eastern United States because he has tremendous heart, tremendous work habits, because they don't see that like they do on the West Coast where they have scouts in every, every county. But on the other hand, uh, I think people throughout the country are starting to realize that New Jersey, especially South Jersey, may be one of the top areas in the country for players. Mm -hmm. The college coaches seem to recognize it a while ago, mm -hmm. and now the pro people are starting to look a lot harder. And I think Mr. Lisinski had a great impact on that. Uh, Brett Laxton brought a lot of people in, John Cupsey, and um, on and on. Um, the Kerner boy from Washington Township. And now scouts are coming in, I think, with a little bit better all right, but it's still not the same as on the West Coast, but our, our players are getting much greater opportunities than they used to. We're up against the break. We'll take a short break. Back with our final segment with the hit doctor, Joe Bart Jr., right after this. Well, Coach, we've run out of time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Jeff. If you want more information on Joe Barth or the Hit Doctor Academy, you can call 1-800-HIT-DOCTOR. Next week, we'll have John Oberg, the legend of Delsey football. We'll see you next week, everybody. <laughs>